There she is. Hi, Hi Shania. Hi there. Look at that little pooch. I know, my little baby. Oh my gosh, cute. Uh, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Yeah, good to hear. How about yourself? I'm pretty good. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're in Detroit? Ooh, it's cold. Ooh. It's cold and it's windy. Yeah, I know yes. you've been here a few times, so you know what it's like. Oh, yeah. Also, Canadian girl, you know, it's yeah. not all that warm <laughs> there either. So. No, 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 it's colder. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's cold. only, it only goes north. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So, queen of me. Um, Let's get right to it. There's definitely a loose, a let loose vibe on this album that I'm appreciating, which after the last few years, I feel like we could all use some of that. Uh, how would you describe the spirit of this album and, and how you came into it? I'm calling the Queen of Me album my happy album <laughs> because it's uh, it was literally an exercise during COVID. I mean, because I wrote all of the songs during COVID and it was an exercise of you know, just getting myself into a better frame of mind, a more positive frame of mind, writing, you know, writing lyrics that would make me smile, make me laugh, make me want to dance. So uh, it was, it was like a self-help, you know, well-being exercise to write these songs. And they ended up just being very uplifting and uh, and it's also how I narrowed down the songs. You know, um, I wrote three albums worth of songs during COVID because I was just bored and I, I ended up being very creatively productive. I narrow, yeah, I narrowed down to, you know, songs that uh, took me to that happier place. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That was a hard place for a lot of people to get to. So I'm glad that you oh, were able to. Yeah. I mean, COVID, obviously, for everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's no one that wasn't somehow distressed. Yeah. Um, yeah. The title itself is so you because, you know, you are sort of the country queen of empowerment. Um, and, you know, I was thinking we had a conversation in 2017 that is one of my favorites because um, you were so honest during it. But uh, that aside, you know, I was thinking about what you told me, which was that LGBTQ plus people have been guiding lights in your own life. And then I was thinking of the title and queen and yeah, yes, queen and, you know, all of that. And I just started to think about how, like, you know, because I know that you told me that, you know, you have really connected to the queer community that that like we as queer people have to really become the master of our own universes. And so I was wondering, was that title, did it happen to come out of any conversations that you had over the years with any LGBTQ people in your your own life that you're close to, or were you thinking of them in the process of naming this album or working through the songs? I'm close to so many LGBTQ plus people, and they're they've been part of my creative teams over the years, um, and they're just part of my my life you're all part of my life you know you're part of my inspiration uh the queen of me title was directly inspired by self-empowerment who what am i really the queen of i'm just the queen of myself i'm not the queen of anyone else or any other anything else you know, just like no one else, uh, I have no, uh, you know, uh, I shouldn't have any control over anyone else. No one should have any control over me either. And so I really, really felt um, motivated, I guess, to, to, to express it for myself and to share it. Um, and I, I've had um, people in my life going through, uh, you know, gender, um, just gender confusion, gender uh, change, um, just all, all of the sadness that I've seen that's so unnecessary. And um, I'm just an all-inclusive person, I believe, to each his own, and we should have be able we should all have the right to have that confidence in ourselves to uh to be ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, 
in Queen of Me. I'm not what you tell me I am. I'm what I proclaim I am. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that is a statement that so many of us have to tell ourselves at some point. No. Yeah. It's not what you, it's not, it's what you are, but it's also what you're not, you know? So yeah. Don't let anyone tell you what you are. <clears throat> yeah. I saw you on the, uh, on the now tour. And um, I have to say there was so much gay energy on your stage um, and I think that's probably true of most Shania shows, um, you know, whether, whether that be the dancers and cowboy hats and chest bearing leather leopard print or Elijah Wood, who happens to be, yep. yeah, uh, who happens to be um, a trans person killing it on the drums. Um, yeah. Uh, so knowing your audience is a, is a mix of drag queens and conservative dads you are one of those rare artists that can bring political communities together how intentional on your part is it to 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 bring a certain level of of gayness to a shania twain show i guess i'm wondering where that comes from well i uh let's start with this so when when it comes to talent i'm always looking for th there's two things main things of uh, people that i want to i want to be around when i'm uh, in in a, a, a professional or creative environment. I want people with good character, honesty, and talent. And so whoever falls in there is in my, my, my circle. And so it's more about what I, the, the in inclusivity than, um, than anything. If I was exclusive, I would say, well, I only want this only want that and I think I, I think we would all miss out we will miss out on a lot of exceptional talent and people by by deciding um who we don't want and as long as you know so it's like okay my criteria is you know good people mm -hmm. and talent and it often I mean you know any LGBTQ plus energy or people that are in my environment are there just on merit and i think that's more valuable than actually specifically being it's like i don't want to be good for a woman i just i don't want to be respected just because i'm a woman i'm on i want to be respected period and this is where we really make our mark and i think it's very important uh, this is why Queen of Me is so, the, the song, you know, I'm not a girl, I'm not a boy, I'm not a baby, I'm not a toy. These are all the things I'm not. As being my label. And now let me tell you who I am. And that means that's, that's personal. That's, you know, I, I don't know if everyone will relate to that, but... That's my feeling about it. You know, I I don't want to be strong for a woman. I just want to be considered strong. I I sure yeah. You know, and that's that's even the man I feel like a woman. It's just like mm -hmm. this is an internal thing. It's how I feel. Yeah. And, um, and that's what's so important. I um, I wanna I wanna you know I'm thinking about your message of inclusivity, which is something we talked about at length in 2017 and to me you have been direct with me about how you stand for that and you have that has been your messaging for a long time um in june last year you sent out a message on your socials for pride saying i believe in equality and i stand with you forever and and during our conversation you really drove that message home um and I think, you know, you know, I, I really have to ask this question because we are queer press. And so, yeah. OK, OK. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I know you I know you have since apologized for what was perceived as support for Donald Trump when we spoke with The Guardian in 2018 or when you spoke with The Guardian Chris, in 2018. Chris, yeah. I'm just going to jump in quickly. This is James from Shania's management team. We're not going to talk about politics on this call. So we're just, if we can move on to the next question, I'd really appreciate it. It isn't so much a political question, James. Um, if you would mind, if I could actually ask the question. Sure, I, I, you can ask the question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, then I can decide if I want to answer it or not. Okay, there you go. That's yeah. 
That's I fair, think, yeah. okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, I really want to talk this through, you know, because I think that it's important to talk through and it's hard for our community to ignore this. Um, but I, I really just want to know how it affected you after that comment was made, which you apologize for knowing how upset it made some members of the queer community. That's really all I want to know. Well, yes. So what I will say, I've always rejected um, anyone who makes someone feel that they are not worthy or they have to be excluded for some uh, personal judgmental uh, reason. And I'm not a politician. I, I'm not somebody that follows it well enough to speak on it. I regret more speaking on it um, because by doing that, in that, uh, uh, and this goes for everything as well, you know, in that um, setting, I wasn't able to explain why and what elements, you know, the whole picture. Sure. And so in realizing after how hurtful it was to even to say that, I really regretted it because I, I, I thought, wow, I would never want to support a policy that would ever do that. Um, I would never personally do that. And um, yeah, so it's good. I think it's also good to, 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 uh, to in, in saying that judging is just not, no. I don't, let's just not judge each other. You know, let's, let's be open like we're doing and honest and, um, and understand each other. So in the greater understanding of it, uh, anyone that criticizes the, 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 the importance of the community of the LGBTQ plus and just is, is, doesn't belong no it does not belong anywhere in my support system you know um of my support so no we need more love we need less criticism less judgment um and that means for everything everyone um and everyone has a right to their own opinion and my uh yeah so yeah i do i regret i regret that anyone felt that that is that i would ever have felt that it was okay to um to exclude LGBTQ plus. Thank you. No Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate it. You know, as a, as a gay person, you know, who has been affected by administrations, um, you know, and, but is also a fan of yours, quite frankly, you know, since I was a kid. Totally. Um, I still understand that. I think it's important though, that we, we separate our, you know, policies are not, it's another it's its own realm. Yeah. I should never have spoken on it. Period. Um, it sounds like you've, you know, it's funny when, you know, you are Shania Twain. I'm not sure that you go through your life thinking about how big your platform is. <laughs> and then you say something yes. and then maybe it, it, it reframes exactly how far your words can spread. Um, and that was a good learning for me as well. That's a very good point because as our world expands and our awarenesses expand, um, uh, the queen of me, even just the, the, that was a big part of my, of defining myself for myself saying, okay, you're queen of your successes and you're queen of your failures. You're queen of your, your good judgment and your bad judgment. Um, you got to take responsibility for yourself. And and the way I feel now is probably not the way I'm going to feel in five years from now about certain things because the world is evolving all the time and it's changing. And change with the right intentions is 
only a positive thing. We need change. We need to evolve. We need to mature. Um, and this has been a great, it's been a great uh, eye opener for me, understanding too that yes, it's more important to me as I get older. I, like I care less about about people's criticism, but I care more about about my effect on others. Mm. And uh, that's just more, that's just a, a, just being more aware of what that really means. Um, and it's great to talk to somebody like one-on-one -on -one about just two people, how one, what one person said, even though not directed in that way at all, affected you and probably so many other people. And, and then in turn reflect, affected me in a very positive way. It's good. I could, yes. And, you know, knowing that chat we had in 2017, I felt like you were feeling it. Um, and really, that's that's what I wanted to know is how how you felt. So I really appreciate you sharing that with me. Oh, yeah. Reflection does a lot of good. It's, we learned so much. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had three years of, you know, time at home to be able to self-reflect. And <laughs> so that helps, I think, a lot. But, um, you know, is there anything else you'd like to say on that note before we move on? I wanted to talk to you about allyship a little bit. Okay. No, I'm good. Okay. And, um, and thanks. Thanks. I'm glad that we got to like revisit the question in it with a different objective. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. I'm happy that you're happy. Or a clear objective. Yeah. Yeah. I think it clarified a lot. Um, yeah. But when you think of your longstanding relationship with the LGBT, uh, the LGBTQ plus community and considering how hard things have been for many people in the community in the last several years, what does it mean to you to, to be an ally for them at this stage in your life? You know, you just told me that it's more important to you now at this stage in your career and life to sort of think about how things affect other people. Um, so as far as allyship, what does it mean to be an ally for you at this point? It's very, it's very important. I write music to communicate. You know, I write music to, to relate to people. And so I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to build uh, relationships through music, friendships through music, um, with people that I can't know in person, you know? So it's music is my, it's my, my avenue. It's my, my way um, of reaching out. And so uh, what I say really does matter to me um, in what it means to, to everyone else that's receiving it. And that, I mean, uh, mostly through the music, obviously, because I do more, I do more music than I do talking. <laughs> you know, that's that's my real language. You know? Talking uh, through your music, yes, yes. Writing, that's writing what you music do. and writing lyrics, exactly. Um, and encouraging and inspiring. I mean, that's what I look to music for, for inspiration. So uh, you know, when I'm in an, when I'm on a tour, I'm in a show and I've got an audience there, we are on the same page. Um, you know, we, we, we're not all from, we're all from very different backgrounds. We're all different ages. We're all, uh, you know, coming from different cultures, realities. Um, you are the bridge. But music is the bridge, not me. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So what I say is very important in that sense. You know, it's the, it's the music that should do all the talking. Mm -hmm. And so uh well then we need a we need a we need a gay anthem from you Shania. There you go. <laughs> pride pride is only just around the corner. June. Pride is just around the corner. Yes. Get... I mean No, it's great. Get... There's so many wonderful things to be said about that. I mean, there's so much so much more freedom to be gained um in in all realms uh of society, but the LGBTQ+ plus, I admire the courage because I think that the community has taken strides forward. Um, I mean, in my own adult life period, it's been leaps and bounds. I, I've got so many friends in the creative world. Um, I mean, Mark Bauer is one of them. We've been working together for over 20 years and there was no such community power and support then um so 
uh, we were all, you know, I mean, it didn't make a difference for our communication one to one. We were always friends. There were never any barriers there one to one. But, you know, I was so aware of of, of that of the struggle, and it was just, um, it's just good and very rewarding to see the the so much advancement. I mean, yeah, Kim Petros, for example. Who you just met at the Grammys and you got to witness a monumental moment on stage. Yeah. Would right. So 20 years ago, and it, that's not that long ago, even 15 years ago, even 10 years ago, would that would that moment have been possible? Or would it have happened? And Kim is the most she, you know, should I say she or they correct me so that I get it right. Uh, Kim uses she, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so, so I want to get it right. So yep, yep, yeah. Uh, Sam Smith uses they, and and Kim uses she. Thank you, but so Kim is like the most angelic person, genuinely sweet, kind, and I could I could sense, uh, I could sense that she was at peace with herself. I hope that that is the case. Um, because that journey has been like, I don't, I haven't asked her about it, but I know that it's, it's been difficult. It's not, you know, it's takes courage. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've known trans people in your life. We talked about Elijah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. It's challenging. Because I interrupt, guys. Uh, Chris, can we do the last question? Yeah, I'm actually not even asking questions, but yes. <laughs> so I just want to say, I just want to say that Kim, Kim is courageous with grace. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, there's your there's your Pride collaboration, 2023. You and Kim Petrus <laughs> yes. in the studio. Kim, Kim, Kim with grace. Great. Kim has grace. There you go. Yeah. Um, Shania, thank you. Um, thank you for your honesty and your candor during this interview. Um, I appreciate it. Okay. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you.